Hi, my name is Brianna Bigley. I have spent most of my career working in the vines and wineries of St. Helena, California, and am currently the assistant winemaker at Pats and Hall. In addition to my work in the wine industry, I teach climate change and business courses at UC Berkeley's Haas School of Business. Today, I'm here to talk with you about the effects of climate change on the vineyard. First, let's look at how temperatures have increased here in Napa County due to climate change. These heat maps use data pulled from the Napa State Hospital, which has been recording temperature measurements since 1893. Early on, the measurements were manually recorded maximums and minimums, but now data are collected automatically all day, every day. Orange temperatures represent higher than the average, while blue is cooler. In the upper graphic, we can see that Napa's maximum temperatures have increased to some extent. The bottom graphic, with its dense orange from the mid 80s to the present, highlights that minimum temperatures have seen a more significant increase than the maximums. Let's walk through how these increases in high and low temperatures are affecting pests and pathogens in the vineyard. In general, temperature changes will alter the life cycles of insects, bacteria, and fungi. For example, most insects flourish between 60 and 87 degrees Fahrenheit. Higher daytime temperatures could mean less daytime activity. Conversely, higher minimum temperatures could shift pest activity into the night. Let's get a little more granular by investigating how increased temperatures might affect an insect pest vine mealybug, and a pathogen, Xylella fastidiosa, the causal agent of Pierce's disease. Vine mealybug prefers temperatures between 52 and 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Historically in the Napa Valley, we saw the active vine mealybug season run from May through October. However, this season has been expanded and now runs from February through November. Let's take a look at some grower data which illustrates this trend. Our first graph from 2018 shows that this Yauntville grower caught eight male vine mealybugs in March, field truthing that yes, vine mealybug is emerging earlier than previously seen. The second graph from 2020 shows that the grower's final flight of males was far into the fall, reaching a yearly high of 38 in November. So, how does temperature play into this increased presence of vine mealybug? Higher minimum temperatures can mean less winter mortality, which allows more viable individuals to emerge the next year. While vine mealybug does not diapause, it does appear to be more sensitive to cold temperatures than grape mealybug. During warm winters, however, the first generation can grow and even reproduce entirely under the bark. Warmer temperatures in the early spring also mean earlier male flights, which increases the number of generations per year. All this equates to more vine mealybugs, more feeding, and therefore more chances for the spread of vine mealybug vectored leaf roll three. We've talked about how warmer temperatures spur the development of vine mealybug and insects in general. And you may now be wondering, what are climate change's predicted effects on the predators of vine mealybug? Well, in 2007, climate change savvy researchers from the University of California modeled the population growth of vine mealybug and three predators, 
with temperature increases of 2 and 4 degrees Celsius. While research predicted that predator populations would increase, it also calculated a disproportionately higher increase of vine mealybug statewide. On top of this, when temperatures are too high, vine mealybug retreats to the bark where predators cannot easily follow. In essence, higher temperatures mean more vine mealybugs, period. Now that we've talked about our pest, let's dive in to temperature's effect on our pathogen, Xylella fastidiosa. While an exact temperature minimum for in-field Xylella mortality has not been established, research and vineyard observations highlight the existence of cold curing in grapevines. As minimum temperatures increase, there will be fewer opportunities for cold curing. Additionally, warm temperatures increase the reproduction of Xylella. Further increased temperatures can also facilitate vector growth, resulting in higher populations of the leafhoppers and spittlebugs that spread Xylella. All right, we've talked about how temperature rise due to climate change will alter the dynamics between our vines in both vine mealybug and xylella. Now, let's expand our view of climate change and discuss how changes in moisture and increased occurrences of extreme weather also affect our farming. This graphic pulled from drought.gov shows that in the last 57 years, Napa County has seen an increase in the intensity of exceptional drought and abnormally wet conditions. What does this mean for the vineyard? As we swing between extreme wet and dry, vapor pressure deficit, or VPD, swings. Of course, during droughts, there is less available water and more potential for vine stress. On top of this, as relative humidity drops, VPD increases. With an increase in VPD, we see an increase in sap flow via transpiration. It's possible that in these drought conditions, xylem feeding insects probe more and transfer more disease because insects have to suck harder and search more to find available water. VPD also affects our ability to control vine mealybug. Vines that are overstressed photosynthesize less, and Mavento loses some of its efficacy as it cannot be converted into its active enol form. Further, in excessively rainy years with low VPD, there is less water movement throughout the vine, and Mavento is not translocated to feeding sites. From this video, I hope you've learned some of the complex ways that climate change has affected the relationships between our vines and various pests and pathogens. While we've only discussed vine mealybug and Xylella fastidiosa, the growth and habits of fungal pathogens as well as other insects will also be altered. By understanding how these relationships will shift, we can take steps to increase our climate resiliency. When it comes to vine mealybug, that means mating disruption year-round and irrigating before a Mavento application. For Pierce's disease, we can be more aggressive with vine removals, knowing that vines are less likely to be cold cured. It is only with an understanding of climate change that we can take steps that are meaningful and impactful like those we just discussed. As our climate shifts, we as growers must shift both our mindsets and our growing practices in response.